Well, good morning and welcome to Life Steps class for Sunday, the 23rd of August, 2020. Today we are going to be looking at verse 11 of Psalm 51, David's great penitential psalm. And today's class session will be approximately 15 minutes long. Some of you are thinking, will we ever get through Psalm 51? Yes, we will. But what we are really looking for here is understanding as we learn together. So that will be more important than getting finished quickly. So let us ask the Lord for wisdom as we briefly look into the word of truth. Lord, open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we start with Psalm 51 and verse 11. In the Christian Standard Bible, it reads as follows. Do not banish me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. But before we go any further with the concept of being banished from God's presence, let's try to put humanity's separation from God in some perspective. It's not really always like we think it is. Some people may say something like, I sinned and then God just cut me off. He doesn't want me anymore. Such an attitude reminds us of the child who says to the parent, You don't love me. And yet that's not true at all. The problem with the child is the child's attitude. The problem with man is his sin. We read in Isaiah 59 verses 1 through 2, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So here we see the spiritually accurate perspective. Although the Isaiah passage is addressed to Judah, the same applies to all of mankind generally. For example, Adam and Eve were cast out of God's presence because of their sin, which God hates. And the same happened to Cain in Genesis 4, verse 14. For me, there is an equivalence between what God said to Adam and what God said through the prophet Nathan to David. He said to Adam, Where art thou? in Genesis 3, verse 9. And this means something like, Adam, I know that you have defied me. But then, in the case of David, God, speaking through the prophet Nathan, says, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? 2 Samuel 12, verse 9. Now, what are the responses of Adam and Eve to the words of God? There's a tremendous difference, and it's worth noting. What is the response of David? We'll see. What is Adam's response? Adam says, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself, Genesis 3.10. And then in verse 12, he passes the buck to the woman. The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat, Genesis 3.12. Here he is also implicitly blaming God for giving him the woman. So, Adam accepts no responsibility for what he has done, and for that matter, neither does Eve, because she blames the serpent. All right, and then that was in uh, Genesis 3.13. The Lord sent them both forth from the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3.23 and 24. But what was the response of David to the conviction of sin? It's recorded right here in Psalm 51. We've talked about Adam's response. Now this is David's response. He is broken. We have been reading about that for the last several weeks. And perhaps he's thinking of Adam when he says, Do not cast me from your presence. Verse 11. And perhaps he's also thinking of Saul in 1 Samuel 15, verse 23, where it says, Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Well, David prays that the Lord would not cast him out. And to me, this almost foreshadows the words of Jesus when he would later say in his Bread of Life discourse, Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. John six thirty seven. God will not reject those who come to him in confession and sincerity of heart. He does not throw them away because they sin, but he calls us to come to him in truth, as David has done here. The Lord says through the prophet Isaiah, Come now and let us reason together. In Isaiah 1 verse 18. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be as crimson, they shall be as wool. 
Well, the thing is that David knows that his sin makes him worthy of banishment from God's presence. He knows that. He said himself to Nathan, The man that has done this thing shall surely die. 2 Samuel 12, verse 5. He knows and acknowledges that he himself is worthy of death. All right. Verse 11, again, in the NIV, Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. And I think another colorful rendition is a contemporary English version which says this, Don't chase me away from you or take your Holy Spirit away from me. But David doesn't really think that God will somehow become unaware of him. He knows that that will never happen, because apparently he wrote Psalm 139 some 14 years earlier upon his coronation as king of Israel. And in that psalm, he says that he will, that he knows that he is always in the presence of God. He confesses that God is with him always. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes and read that psalm for the purpose of contrast with the present situation. If you want to follow along, it's Psalm 139, and we'll read um, 1 through 18, or maybe it's 19, but just follow along. This is going to be in the New Living Translation. O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand, and when I wake up, you are still with me. So again, David knows that God will never leave him, but David knows that he deserves to be banished from God's presence. Charles Spurgeon writes about this, Cast me not away from thy presence. Throw me not away as a worthless thing, or banish me like Cain from the face and favor, from thy face and favor. Permit me to sit among those who share thy love, though I only be suffered to keep the door. And William Cowper writes, We learn that this is one of the great punishments of sin. It procures the casting out of a man from the face of God. It may let us see how dear bought are the pleasures of of sin. And Wilson said, like the leper who is banished from society until cleansed, or as Saul was rejected from being king because he obeyed not the word of the Lord, 1 Samuel 15, 23, David could not but feel that his transgression would have deserved a similar rejection. Cast me not away, Lord, and this is Thomas de Jesu, cast me not away, Alas, I have cast thee from me, yet cast me not away. Hide not thy face from me, although I so often have refused to look at thee. Leave me not without help to perish in my sins, though I have aforetime left thee. Now contrast this with what David says in Psalm 11, verse 7. 
The righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. And then David also writes in Psalm 24, verses 2 through 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean heart, hands, and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. No, God is not going to cast David away. He had the prophet Nathan come to him to open his eyes to his sin and convict him. He knew how David would respond. He's not tearing him up and throwing him away because he is a sinner. The thing is that David now seems so convicted by his sin that he know that he deserves rejection. He knows he deserves rejection and being cast out. Now this next phrase in verse 11, take not thy Holy Spirit, is something somewhat controversial. Some think that it means the Holy Spirit as we understand it. Others like Ellicott say the petition is equivalent to a prayer against rejection of divine favor, not to be pressed into any doctrinal discussion about the Holy Spirit. And Barnes notes a similar thing. It's not certain that David understood that this means the Holy Spirit as we understand it. But John Calvin thinks this does mean the Holy Spirit, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Calvin says, um, yes, this is what it means, but the redeemed of God do not need to fear that they will lose the Spirit. For he says that the spirit displayed by David reflects upon his offense that he is agitated with fears and yet it rests in the persuasion that being a child of God, he would not be deprived of what indeed he had justly forfeited, John Calvin. So yes, we sometimes think that God has turned away from us when things seem so negative and bleak. But as Gill says, the people of God are never cast away from his favor or out of his heart's love but they may for a while be without his gracious presence or not see his face, nor have the light of his countenance. And yet the Lord says through the prophet Isaiah, in a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy redeemer. Isaiah 54 verse eight. Now for homework read Psalm 51 verses one through 11. And consider if you have ever, in your own life, prayed such things to God. Well, that's about it for today. Next week, we're going to continue on with verse 12, Lord willing. And have a great week. Thank you.